All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless me here talking real music in real time for a couple of real people out there. Just like you right there. Just like me right here. All right, we're going to pick up the conversation uh, after that video I did about Neil, Sean, and Steve Perry, um, which uh, made a few of the Steve Perry loyalists come out of the woodwork and smack me upside the head. So <laughs> it's fine. Um, I don't have any personal vendetta against Steve Perry uh, or Neil Sean, for that matter. But I am going to give a fair and balanced look. It's like what the old Fox News used to say, fair and balanced. Uh, I don't think anybody does fair and balanced news coverage uh, anymore. Uh, everybody has a bias. Um, before we get to my, you know, fair and balanced view of Steve Perry, here's another band from this year that dropped an album. I'm going to be doing my top 10, which may end up being like a top 15 or possibly a top 20 albums uh, of 2023. Uh, the band is called Ryan and the album is called Wings. Uh, I really like the artwork CD looks just as interesting. And uh, this is another band from Sweden. This is more upbeat. Uh, it's a little bit more muscular than some of my recommendations, but I like it because it's different. Uh, I can't really put this in a hole and say it sounds like this or it sounds like that. It is somewhat 80s-ish, uh, but it's modern and it's melodic. And uh, like I say, it's a bit more up-tempo and a bit more muscular. Another band from Sweden, by the way, Ryan. I believe that's their second album, courtesy of Frontiers Music. And, um, you know, if you're looking for some new material, there you go. Now, um, some old material here, a never-ending conversation. In fact, entire websites, uh, chat rooms, uh, Facebook pages have all developed around uh, fans who are loyal to Steve Perry. And here's uh, the punchline of this particular video. Uh, Journey fans are more loyal to Steve Perry than anyone else in the band. All right. Not even close. And uh, Steve hasn't been in the band for, what is it, 25 years now? That's crazy to think that Steve Perry hasn't been in Journey for 25 years. Of course, he took like a seven or eight year break from 1987 to 1995 or 1996. Apparently, the story uh is something like this. He called up Jonathan Kane and uh, was wondering if maybe uh, everybody could get back together again. Now, I have some theories on why that happened. I have done other videos about that. Uh, and I think it's a little bit more business than anything else. That's what I think that had to do with. I believe the record label needed another album. And Steve Perry, from what happened on For the Love of Strange Medicine, probably thought, hey, all of my great ideas, I can channel those through Journey like I did on Raised on Radio, will sell more albums. But um, after that tour, the uh, For the Love of Strange Medicine tour, I believe that uh, Steve Perry uh, didn't want to tour anymore at that point. Now, I know about the hip injury and that was a convenient thing that happened. But even after Steve got the surgery, he never went back out on the road. Always said that he wanted to tour, but never did. I believe he never really wanted to tour. And you could look at the evidence. Um, he hasn't uh, been out there touring at all. He did not tour uh, when Traces came out a few years ago. And many of his fans thought that he uh, was going to do that. Anyway, um, so the Neil is done with Steve video sparked some real conversation. I have uh, one of my patrons by the name of Susan to thank for that. Uh, she's a Steve Perry loyalist and uh, a good person. And it seems as though she knows her stuff when it comes to Steve. But a lot of fans are blindly loyal to Steve Perry. And I understand why. All right. I'm not coming at them and saying, no, you shouldn't be loyal to Steve Perry. There's no question that many fans gave up on Journey because Steve Perry 
wasn't in the band after 1998. But Journey has gone on and uh, they've made a lot of money. Although, <laughs> honestly, they would have made more money uh, if Steve Perry hadn't negotiated the deal that he had uh, back in 98 when they basically started looking for other singers. And I think the first thing he did was uh, pick up the phone and uh, call his lawyer. So that might be a little out of place as far as the timeline there, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty accurate based on both the stories from the outside and a few that I've heard from the inside. So um, Steve left Journey, or he forced Journey to replace him. And I think um, that is true, okay? In other words, um, the band didn't force Steve Perry out. Steve Perry basically said, uh, don't continue without me, don't call it Journey. Uh, I mean, obviously that's been in the news uh, since the VH1 documentary, uh, but the band didn't want to wait for him. And this is the fair and balanced part. I don't think the band should have had, you know, they, they shouldn't have had to wait for Steve Perry. Uh, they put out this really great album and they didn't tour behind it. I'm talking about Trial by Fire. Um, one of the songs uh, was nominated for a Grammy. It didn't win, but I don't think Journey had ever been nominated for a Grammy. And it's a great song, very orchestral sounding. Jonathan Cain did some great keyboard work on that song. And uh, Neil Sean's guitar solo is fantastic. And Steve just kills it as he normally does on vocals. And that goes to my point about Steve being better with Journey than without Journey. Um, some of his loyal fans will say no. Street Talk, I think, was a spectacular album. Part of that was because he had a lot of great collaborators, uh, including the amazing Randy Goodrum, who just wrote and co-wrote some amazing songs with and for Steve. So um, that was his Jonathan Cain. And you don't get much better than Randy Goodrum as a songwriter. He is an elite writer, and I put him up there probably in the top 20 writers for contemporary music coming up with great ideas and great lyrics so uh, steve had great instincts to work with him it showed it showed that he wanted to class it up a little bit he wanted to do something a little beyond the arena rock uh format so fans will never forget steve no matter what and no matter who the singer is in journey um a lot of Arnell fans uh, become unglued when you start talking about how Steve is better than Arnell. And really, that shouldn't be a debate. I mean, Arnell would say the same thing. Uh, Arnell has been with the band longer than any singer they've had. So um, that's great. Um, but really, uh, if you're a hardcore Steve Perry fan, hardcore Journey fan, um, Nobody really can replace Steve Perry, and nobody's going to argue with the fact that Steve is the best singer the band's ever had. It's really not even close. Steve Augeri did a great job in the band, as did Jeff Scott Soto for a brief period of time, even though uh, JSS didn't have the classic tenor, uh, according to the band, uh, after the fact. But Jeff can pretty much sing anything, and so he was a great choice uh, to bridge the gap between Odd Jerry and uh, Arnell Pineda. So um, that's like a history lesson, but I want to talk more about how Steve fans are super loyal. Uh, fans look at Steve as the aggrieved party, even if it might be the other way around. And I'm not saying it's the other way around, but um, when you look at the facts, uh, Steve made out like a bandit when he left the band. And uh, Neil Sean doesn't like that. Uh, there have been uh, lawsuits going all over the place when it comes to trademarks and copyrights and, you know, who's getting what money and what percentage should they be getting. And Steve Perry uh, cut himself a great deal thanks to his attorney, which I believe he thanked uh, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, <laughs> which people will say, yeah, he, I think it was Lee Phillips, right? He thanked Lee Phillips. Um, so Steve Perry is a shrewd businessman, right? He wanted to make sure that these guys 
suffered financially for what they were going to do, um, which is weird because on one hand, you don't want the brand to suffer. If you love this brand and you don't want to crack the stone, then maybe you shouldn't go too hard after these guys. Uh, allow them to proceed and make some money and rebuild the brand. And they kind of did. When Arnell showed up, they definitely rebuilt the brand. And I think when Ajeri was there uh, after the second Ajeri album, the Generations album, um, they were in the process of rebuilding with Steve Ajeri, but then his voice just gave out. And so, um, you know, Neil Sean goes on YouTube and finds Arnell and, and that got some great publicity for a number of years. There's been at least one documentary about that. And I think there's another one in the works. So yeah. And, uh, Arnell is a hero because he's a humble guy, um, from the Philippines, uh, came from literally nothing. So it's a great story. Uh, now he's in this super band and, uh, from all accounts, a really nice guy. So it's kind of hard to dislike Arnell Pineda. That's what makes it difficult to critique him and to compare him. Um, and it's kind of unfair to compare anybody to Steve Perry, really, except for the elite singers uh, from other bands like Lou Graham, Jimmy Jameson. These are, in, in my humble opinion, these are guys who are all uh, in that same group, uh, depending on you know, who you liked more. Kansas had Steve Walsh and he's phenomenal. I mean, you can go down the list of great bands from that era and find amazing singers. Even Dennis DeYoung uh, should get some credit being this classically trained singer in Styx. Um, by the way, Styx should really bring Dennis back, but, you know, I've done too many videos on that topic. So, um, so fans look at Steve as the aggrieved party. Neil Sean has been a very public figure in recent years on social media. And there have been many controversies. And in a lot of people's brains, that hasn't, uh, I don't know, it just, it just hasn't looked good. We'll just put it that way. Um, some people side with Neil, but a lot of people are tired of this. And it's been pretty quiet lately, so you've got to give everybody credit. Uh, Neil's been quiet. John's been quiet. Um, John really hasn't been a troublemaker, per se. Um, but once, you know, Neil fired back about the money, uh, John fired back and had his own lawsuit. So those lawsuits are still out there. But um, I think recently the band was in Las Vegas and they were hugging on stage and People were sending me messages. Wow, it looks like uh, John and Neil are buddies again. And I don't think they're buddies, but, um, you know, they do have an ATM machine and they're about to embark on a tour, which could generate them um, a lot of money, like in the hundreds of millions of dollars, at least. If you look at the top bands from this past year, you know, $1.3 billion, that's what the Eagles brought in. So Journey uh, has the potential, especially with Def Leppard and some of these other opening bands, they have the potential to get close to those figures, uh, depending on what they charge for tickets, right? So anyway, um, I've got some more points here. So a lot of people look at Neil Sean and they see controversy um, and some other things, which I will get to toward the end. I'm going to try to gently say this. Actually, it's coming up here. Steve Perry does seem to have something against Jonathan Cain, even though John keeps a lower profile than Neil. We found that out during interviews when uh, Perry was promoting Traces and he was asked about Jonathan Cain uh, and if he had uh, read Jonathan's book and... Uh, Steve had a visceral reaction. Um, he did not hold back. He did not mince words. And nobody really addressed that from the journey camp later. Like, why is he so mad at John? Uh, it might just be he doesn't like uh, John's uh, choices. He doesn't maybe appreciate where John's coming from uh, when it comes to his own spiritual walk and so forth. So I don't know. 
but it's um it's definitely something that's there and um it may go way back we don't know uh it may be the phone call the infamous phone call telling steve that hey um i'm going to be looking for other singers and neil apparently was on the other line when john made the call so Anyway, there's so much history with this band. And yeah, there are books coming out and it'll be interesting. I might have to read those books to see if there's anything in there that I don't already know. Um, and it would be good to catch up on some of the things I probably have uh, forgotten about. So um, anyway, um, Steve, this is the thing that I think is important where fans look at Steve Perry and they think he's, he's extra smart. So Steve Perry has smartly steered away from relationships <laughs> that would damage him as a brand, whereas both John and Neil have had trouble in this area. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of the punchline of the video. John and Neil have other people in their orbit. I'm not going to mention names, uh, but those people are, um, shall we say, like type A personalities. And... Um, I'm just going to say that there's a lot of stuff going on uh, that uh, they probably aren't thinking themselves to do, or they're collaborating with their other halves, and they're coming up with ideas on what to do next. Uh, in some cases, it might be good, might be good, but um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think the fans really like it. Just saying. And I'm not saying, look, um, if you've got a significant other and you're demanding that they be, you know, wallflower, don't get involved with this. Um, you might be a, a bad person by doing that. But in this case, <laughs> based on what we've seen over the past few years, uh, the politics coming in to the situation where Neil seems to have the upper hand there. But then on the other side, you've got a very decadent and very tabloid um, atmosphere. Um, and so those two things going back and forth, um, people remember that stuff and they're put off by it. And I think, again, Steve Perry ends up being above the fray. He's the only one who smartly avoided all of that stuff course, uh, Steve Perry didn't get married, and uh, he's probably better for that. Uh, and this coming from a married man, happily married man, I'm just saying, uh, in some cases, in, in this particular business, um, it might be better, you know, just uh, to be alone. And Steve Perry, um, I think he kind of embodies that only child, sort of reclusive, do it my own way. Um, this way I don't get hurt. I, I can just live my life. Of course, he had Kelly and then uh, Kelly passed away. Um, and, and that just adds to the story where there are a lot of fans that say, look at this. He was willing to hang out with this woman, even though he knew she wasn't going to be around. And uh, that's, that's a, a big person. To do that. So I give Steve a ton of credit. That's like the opposite of the rock star life. Really? You know, you meet somebody and you're like, really? Uh, you're terminally ill? Eh, have a good day. Uh, good luck with your treatments and so forth. Nope. That's a story in and of itself. You could make a movie based on Steve and Kelly. You could certainly, and people would, and the Steve Perry fans, would flock to see that movie. Even people who don't know the story would be sucked into it because it's it, it, it's just almost surreal uh, that he did that. And uh, again, that registers super high marks for Steve, especially with the ladies. The ladies so appreciate that because they know that Steve wasn't in it for anything else, just the love and the friendship and the companionship and um, and he did the right thing. And uh, then you juxtapose that with the lawsuits and the back and forth and the crazy religious stuff. And you just, yeah, <laughs> it's just, you know, more points for Steve Perry. So um, I think that's a pretty good summary 
of the things that um, make Steve Perry stand out and, and make him the favorite in all of this stuff. Um, there's one more thing, though, that sort of transcends all of this stuff, and that's Steve Perry's voice, right? And I mentioned it before. He's in that elite group of singers, the Jimmy Jamesons and the Steve Walshes and the Lou Grahams. Um, again, he's right there. If not on top, he's somewhere at number two or three. It depends on your taste in great vocals, but all of those people I've mentioned, and there are more. Um, Mickey Thomas is another great singer who's still out there and still amazing for his age. Um, Steve Perry's voice just makes people happy. Um, the way he sings those classic songs, uh, they just, you know, burst out of the radio even now. And uh, nobody's going to top Steve in that area. So again, um, Steve fans are loyal. Um, they, they're, you know, loyal to a fault maybe at times, but um, I think uh, justifiably loyal and uh, they're protective of Steve, even though Steve, again, is kind of reclusive and doesn't get out there and do a lot. I think Steve does deserve, you know, his privacy on one hand, but the fans, I think, also deserve to see him every so often because I think the fans talk about him more than he talks about the fans. And that's been the case since like 1987. So again, that's where I'm trying to be fair and balanced. Um, but even with that said, um, again, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I've said this in other videos. And with Steve Perry, um, if you don't see him, um, it just makes the next time you do see him better. You know, and that's what a lot of his fans are essentially looking at even now. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that Steve will put something out there for the fans. It would be great to talk about Steve Perry again in a way that we can listen to his music and critique it and talk about it. The Dolly Parton duet um, for me was a big letdown. Um, but for some, just to hear Steve out there and he's on this album and this album is selling a lot of units and that's his song, although I think it's his and Jonathan Cain's song. So again, maybe some publishing, maybe some sales of that going to the pockets of the people involved, um, unless it's been sold off to somebody. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think Steve owns his stuff still. I think it's Neil and John that have sold their ends off, which again, makes sense based on what I just did here in this video. All right, um, so I'm long-winded here and out of breath, so I'm going to leave. But before I go, here's Ryan again in their album Wings. This is muscular, listenable, melodic rock from the beautiful country of Sweden, the home of the great Kent Hilly, who sings uh, for the band Perfect Plan. I just thought of Kent because he's such a great singer, and uh, I've been meaning to talk to him for some time. But um, this is their album Wings, really good melodic rock, decent stuff that you should give a listen to just because it's something different. You may not like it. It's okay. Um, you get your money back. You stream it. And if you don't like it, you didn't spend any money on it. And if you really want to support the band, go out and buy a CD coaster for your collection. You put all of your adult beverages right on top. People show up and they go, hey, what's this? And you go, hey, it's, it's Wings by Ryan. Isn't that nice? And they go, is that a CD? I haven't seen one of those in quite some time. So maybe, maybe that's what they do. Or maybe they're a bunch of throwback people like you are and they have CDs. Let's hope, right? Let's hope that the CD makes a big comeback. I know vinyl is doing quite well out there these days. And uh, that's kind of weird because the CD is more convenient than having to flip a record over, you know? Um, but hey, it's, we're living in the digital age where, Everybody is streaming everything. That's what they do. All right, people, um, you're streaming this video right now. Thank you for doing that. Uh, please support the channel if you can afford to do that. That's uh, through Patreon, YouTube memberships. Um, those are the two big ways to do it. Also, I'm having daily conversations about Steve Perry and Neil Sean and 
all things related to that over on Patreon. Uh, YouTube members get sneak peeks to videos before everybody else gets to see them. That's a perk. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's about as technologically perky as I can be here because I'm just I'm not really good at all this, uh, you know, locals stuff and Patreon stuff. Um, it's necessary because the algorithm does not like me because sometimes they talk about things I'm not supposed to. Um, so I appreciate everybody who hangs out and watches these videos. God bless everyone. Here comes the political stuff and the religious stuff. Uh, please uh, pray for peace in the Middle East and around the world. And, uh, have yourself a Merry Christmas, even though it's not quite here yet, but it will be soon.